I was not there. I didn't see the shooting. I can't testify to anything that happened to Sharika on Ray Road. In a surprising twist, they found Caruth guilty of planning Sharika Adams' murder, but not guilty of the murder itself. I'd love to have the opportunity to make things right with her and Chancellor. Meet Chancellor Lee Adams, known as Lee by his grandmother, Sandra, who raised him to become a man who has overcome unimaginable odds. Instead of looking back on what you lost, we're looking to what we have ahead of us. Yes. He's a handsome 20-year-old young man who fights every day to walk, who works really hard every day to speak the words that are forming in his brain. He loves horseback riding and Carolina Panther football. Everyone around him is amazed by the strength of Lee, his determination to improve every day, the way he walks and the way he speaks. Lee suffers from cerebral palsy and brain damage, caused by a lack of oxygen when he was just eight months old. What caused the lack of oxygen, you might ask? Well, it's because his mother was shot four times by a hired hitman while driving her car. Lee's mother was Cherica Adams, and his father was former NFL player Ray Karrath. In the middle of November 1999, a 24-year-old woman by the name of Cherica Adams, who was eight months pregnant, called 911 just after midnight. 911, shot. Where are you at, me? I'm eight months pregnant. A car had pulled up right next to her and fired five shots into her driver's windshield, hitting her four times. She had been on a date with her boyfriend, NFL football player Ray Carrath, and was following behind his car when it stopped in the middle of the street. Cherica survived that night and was able to stay alive long enough to deliver a son, premature and with brain damage, and also mustered enough strength to write a note to the police from her hospital bed. However, her body, internal organs ravished by bullets, weren't able to hold on for much longer. Break! Cherica Adams was named after Cher. Her mother, Sandra, thought she would grow up to be a strong woman just like Cher, and at the end of her name was from the word Eureka. Cher just wasn't enough. So I said, well, I put the two together. So it was Cherica. Sandra had Cherica in the summer before her senior year in a small town about 40 miles west of Charlotte, North Carolina. Cherica was petite, gorgeous, and wanted to be famous. She modeled as a teenager and started college but dropped out halfway to pursue a career in real estate. Ray Carrath was born in Sacramento, California, a typical sports-loving kid. During preschool, when asked to draw a picture of what he wanted to be when he grew up, he sketched a person between two goalposts with his hands held above his head, motioning the touchdown signal. Ray Carrath had always wanted to play football. He attended Valley High School and excelled on the football field, but struggled academically. His mother pushed him hard to keep his grades up and to always be an inquisitive person, and Ray was good enough on the field and in the classroom to earn a scholarship to the University of Colorado to play wide receiver. During college, Kareth also fathered a son, Ray Jr. His high school girlfriend had full custody of the son, and Ray paid child support but did not want to be in the child's life. At CU, he became a Big 8 all-conference wide receiver. Kareth had lightning speed, and after his combine showing, it shot his projection up to the first round. In the 1997 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers took Ray Carruth with their 27th overall pick in the first round, and he would sign a contract worth $3.7 million. In his first season, he took off and was named to the NFL All-Rookie Team. Perhaps Ray Carruth was one of the answers to pull the Panthers up from the bottom of the NFC, but that rookie year was his best. Injuries plagued him over the next couple of seasons, and he didn't score another touchdown in the league. But little did he know that off-the-field issues would soon end his time in a Carolina Panthers uniform. Ray's personality was becoming more charming, and he began to open up a little bit more. 
off the field, he was often surrounded by friends, both males and females, and sometimes not the best characters, and was known to even date multiple women at once. In June of 1998, Ray Kareth met Cherica Adams at a pool party in Charlotte, in which many Charlotte Hornets and Carolina Panthers players were in attendance. Cherica was working in real estate at the time and was smitten with her brand new friend. By April of 1999, Cherica was pregnant, and around the same time, Ray had gotten another woman pregnant who decided to get an abortion. But Cherica already had an abortion before, so she adamantly said that she wanted to keep the child and hoped that Ray Kareth would be in her life. However, Ray did not want another child, and his mind began turning of what to do. And what he decided to do was absolutely despicable. In 1999, Ray met a man named Van Brett Watkins, who worked security at a Charlotte strip club and started doing odd jobs for Kareth, such as washing his cars. Watkins was a notoriously horrible person, already having spent time in prison and later stated that he had killed four people before meeting Ray Kareth. Kareth asked a question to Watkins, inquiring what the price would be for him to beat up Adams and make her abort the baby. Watkins answered with, I said, I don't need a little girl, I killed it. At some point, according to Watkins down the road in testimony, the two agreed that Kareth would pay Watkins $3,000 up front and then $3,000 more after Cherica was eliminated. Kareth had many ideas of when the hit could occur, hoping that it would be sooner rather than later. He mentioned perhaps a hit could occur when he was attending training camp in Spartanburg, South Carolina, or Watkins could beat Cherica up by the dumpster behind a restaurant one evening, or the hit could even occur when Ray was taking Cherica to Lamaze class. However, Watkins was hesitant. Ray had not paid him the entire down payment, and soon it was growing close to the baby's due date. A few months later in mid November, just hours prior to a movie date with Cherica, Kareth had Watkins and an individual named Michael Kennedy, a local drug dealer, over to his house. In speaking with Kennedy, Kareth asked for a car that did not stand out, and Kennedy said he had access to a Nissan Maxima that he could drive. Watkins did not have a gun, and Kennedy answered, And at the time, my friend was selling a gun. He gave me $100 and told me to take Watkins to get the gun. While Kareth and Cherica Adams attended the movies, Watkins and Kennedy went to get a gun, and according to the testimony by Watkins, He was gonna call me after the movie was over to be close by so I can see them, and when I follow him, that his friend was gonna do the rest. It was mid-November. Cherica attended the movies with Ray seeing the film, The Bone Collector, which ended shortly after midnight. She was following behind him when his car suddenly stopped in the middle of a dark street. Cherica, moments later, could be heard on a 911 call in a panicked and dazed voice, saying she had been shot several times by someone in a car who had pulled up next to hers. Kareth had pulled away immediately after the shooting, leaving Cherica bleeding out, trying to find help. She ended up in an elderly man's front yard. Then the car pulled into my driveway, and then it turned and come across the front of my lawn. On the other side of town, Cherica's mother, Sandra, was unable to sleep that night, up fixing herself a midnight snack when she received a phone call that no mother wished to get. I just remember dropping to my knees and just wailing. Just God, just please don't let my baby die. Her daughter was fighting for her life in the hospital after a murder attempt. Once arriving at the hospital, Cherica was immediately given a C-section to remove the premature baby, a boy who had been without oxygen or blood for a dangerous amount of time. After the emergency delivery, the doctors found that many of Cherica's internal organs suffered severe damage due to the four gunshots that entered her body. Miraculously, the baby was alive, but it was too early to tell if he would survive. After Cherica's family arrived at the hospital, Ray Kareth arrived as well, but oddly with another woman acting as if he had not been with Cherica earlier that night. Cherica, although intubated, was able to write an account of the shooting, saying that Ray was indeed in the car ahead of hers and stopped, thus blocking her car when another car pulled up to hers and shot her through the driver's window. However, that conversation would be her last with authorities as her health was fading fast. Thus, the doctors decided to put her in a medically induced coma. The police immediately began an investigation 
investigation surrounding Karis. Going through his phone records and noticing that he had been talking to Cherica on the phone that night, he switched over to another call with Kennedy and then back again. Then there was another number that showed up repeatedly in the months before, a number that went into a shady motel switchboard, the hotel in which Watkins often stayed. Meanwhile, Chancellor Lee was the premature baby and he was doing well, taking a bottle and although it was too early to tell how serious the neurological issues were, it was looking like he would definitely pull through. Ray was arrested but shortly made bail. Others who were arrested were Michael Eugene Kennedy, who was thought to have rented and driven the car that the shooting came from. William Edwards Van Brett Watkins was also arrested, and he was believed to be the individual who had pulled the trigger. A third person, Stanley Abraham, was arrested as he was believed to be a passenger in the car. It was now mid-December and Cherica was being kept alive solely via life support. Her mother, Sandra, decided it was time to say goodbye. I had so much peace about making the decision to take Sharika off of life support because she was existing, she was not living. The case officially became a murder investigation as Cherica Adams on December 14, 1999 was pronounced dead. Ray, who had been out on bond, would now be pursued by police as Cherica passing away made for much more serious charges. Ray was known to flee when things got difficult, and this was one of those situations. A woman by the name of Wendy Cole owned a hair salon in Charlotte, but was going to drive to California to attend school, which was also where Ray Kareth grew up. Ray convinced Wendy to help him flee. Late the same night that Adams had passed away, Ray Kareth curled up in the trunk of Wendy Cole's Toyota Camry, heading west on Interstate 40. It was now a federal manhunt. Kareth's mother, fearing for his life, told authorities that he might be in Tennessee, and he was. He was in the parking lot of a Best Western Hotel near Jackson, where Cole had recently checked in. While being questioned, Cole motioned her eyes to the car keys on the table in the hotel room, which sparked investigators to check the trunk of the car. There was NFL player Ray Kareth in the fetal position. Unable to flee as his legs were asleep, he surrendered shortly later, and while he sat in a Tennessee jail cell, was released by the Carolina Panthers. Ray Kareth's NFL playing days, and perhaps his days as a free man, were officially over. In October of 2001, the trial took place in Charlotte, North Carolina. The opening statements began with Cherica's 911 call. The prosecutors would say that Kareth hired Watkins to kill Cherica Adams in order to not have to pay child support. The defense would rebut by saying that Kareth was earning $650,000 a year. Thus, the motive was implausible and that the shooting was due to Kareth refusing to finance a drug deal. The defense had many of Kareth's friends on the stand to state that he wanted the baby. People including Panthers players like Moose and Mohammed and Hannibal Navies. The defense also brought in Brett Watkins to testify oddly enough. The defense thought that they could get the hot-headed Watkins to admit the shooting was due to the drug deal, but he said under oath that he had been hired under Kareth. I did it because he made me do it, okay? He made the other two also do it. Okay, that's your client. The prosecution had interesting people testifying on their behalf, including a woman from Colorado by the name of Amber Turner, who said on the stand that she had an abortion after Ray Kareth had threatened her life. Also testifying was Michelle Wright, who was the high school girlfriend and mother of Kareth's son, who was now several years old, saying that she too had been threatened by Ray. She said that he once told her on a phone call to not be surprised if she got into a fatal car wreck. The trial lasted 11 weeks and had 70 witnesses. The jury returned the verdict on January 19th, finding Ray Kareth not guilty of first-degree murder, but guilty on conspiring to commit murder, discharging a firearm into occupied property, and using an instrument with intent to destroy an unborn child. He was sentenced to 18 years and 11 months to 24 years in prison. The other three men didn't go to trial. Watkins had taken a plea deal on second degree charges, sentenced to at least 40 years. Thus, the reason Kareth was not guilty of first degree murder. Michael Kennedy had pleaded guilty and received a minimum of 11 years. Abraham pleaded guilty and received 90 days in jail and five years of probation. Kareth stayed relevant in the media, especially locally in Charlotte while he was in prison. He wrote lengthy letters to the Charlotte Observer, at one time demanding custody, and conducted a nationally televised interview in which he explained the murder from his take. I was not there. I didn't see the shooting. I didn't hear any shots. 
I can't testify to anything that happened to Sharik on Ray Road. When Leslie Bogsian of CNN asked Kareth about him associating with the men who killed Cherica, the first words that he spoke was, I feel guilty about none of it. Kareth at first was determined to shorten his sentence. He appealed numerous times but was unsuccessful. He was found liable for the wrongful death of Cherica Adams in 2004, where he was ordered to pay Sandra $5.8 million, but he had little or no money left at that time. Former collegiate football star, first round NFL selection Ray Kareth, spent 19 years in prison and was considered an inmate with continuous good behavior and worked as a barber while he was behind bars. He was released on October 22nd, 2018, and he registered to spend his post-prison life in Pennsylvania. Ray Kareth ceased pursuing custody of his son, Lee, right before his release. Writing in a letter to the Charlotte Observer, he said, I promise to let them be which I now see is in everyone's best interests. Chancellor Lee was very aware of what his father did, saying it was a bad thing. Lee is also aware that his father spent a significant time in prison. Lee did mention in an interview that his favorite place was Colorado, where his father went to college. Sandra is determined to raise Lee as long as she can and is insistent that Ray will never get custody, but is undecided on whether Lee should ever meet his father. Ray is now 46 years old still living in that unknown location in Pennsylvania, and wears a black rubber bracelet every day, with one side that reads in white text, December 15, 1999 to October 22, 2018, the dates of Ray Kareth's incarceration. On the other side, it reads, never forget. Kareth texted the Charlotte Observer and said that it simply reminds me not to take my freedom for granted, to make the most of the second chance that I have been given, and that no matter how bad things get for me out there, it will never be as bad as those 18 years and 11 months. He went on to say in an email to the same reporter, my only desire is for true forgiveness and a genuine opportunity to be a part of my son's life. And out of respect for Miss Adams and her feelings towards me, I have no plans of ever trying to force my way in. I'm going to be patient and give her the space she rightfully deserves. When the time is right, I believe that Miss Adams will eventually extend an invitation for me to have contact with my son, and I will eagerly accept. Scott Fowler spoke to Sandra Adams after he received that email and told Fowler that she had long forgave Kareth for what he did, but she had not forgotten. And as time draws closer, she wonders if Kareth really understands the hurt he had caused her family. Recently, Lee Adams received a check for several thousand dollars, which in a note enclosed said it was the first of many payments that was due to him. The note was signed, Ray Kareth. <laughs>